What's up peeps? How's it going? So this is the tank um, about two or three days later um, since uh, my last recorded video um, I showed you guys sort of the tank just bare um, I've added all the sand in and stuff and you can see there's um, actually a few corals um, in there already I'll get to that in a sec but um, yeah first off with the sand so I ended up going with seven bags total of um, of carib sea sand uh, live aragonite um, sand uh, five bags of the special grade you can sort of see it on the underlayer um, you can actually see the two uh, different sand so I went with two uh, sorry five bags of special grade and two bags of Fiji pink um, now with the five bags of special grade I honestly feel like I didn't have enough um, I wanted a, a sort of deeper sand bed um, at least on one side of the tank and um, you can see just in some parts it was a little bit too thin so um, I found two extra bags uh, of the Fiji pink and I decided to pick them up and I got them pretty cheap um, from a reefer that was uh, that didn't need them so um, yes yeah, so that's pretty cool so I got a pretty decent sand bed um, and obviously the reason for that is so it can just pretty much hold a, a crap ton of nitrifying bacteria um, I won't be servicing the sand uh, probably ever to be honest um, maybe the in the initial stages um, you know when there's algae and stuff growing but probably after a month or two I will just leave it yeah so I'm pretty happy with the with the sand bed I think the idea is to have um, sort of a lot of macroalgae on the left side and ones that actually I can root into the sand um, and then like fish won't be able to you know, like dig them up uh, you know too easily um, I'll actually turn off this canister that's breaking the uh, water surface just so you can probably hear me a bit better so just give me a sec cool so now that that canister is off um, it's pretty quiet I do obviously have the Oase uh, Biomaster 850 running um, I've just got the spray bar hitting um, directly down as it was too loud having um, the Eheim and the Oase both sort of hitting uh, the surface. <laughs> um, whole family could hear it from their room and stuff. So put the spray bar on one side and then I've got the other canister on this side just to break the water surface and agitate it um, just for gas exchange and pH and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, I want a lot of macroalgae on this side. Not a lot, but, but ones that can... Um, obviously grow uh, and ones that you know look kind of nice as well um, I've just got some grape calerpa in here as well um, I picked this one up just from uh, my local fish shop it was just a few strands they had uh, now it's early days obviously in the tank so it, it might melt it possibly will but hopefully it it comes back um, it's just something to try out I know mackerel can be really finicky with new tanks but um, yeah so I'll get to the, the the decision to add corals so early. Um, a lot of you guys might be be frowning <laughs> at at the fact, but um, there is a, there's definitely a method behind it. Um, if you guys have watched uh, Jake Adams Reef Builders, um, one of his videos he did a few years ago on his nano tank, he actually added corals in um, on the same day he set the tank up. Now um, you probably think. Oh, just because he did it, you know, you don't have to do it as well. And he's got a lot of um, access to other things. But I, like when you really think about it, um, it, it, it sort of makes sense. As long as you're not, you know, adding anything with ammonia um, in the water, the coals should be fine. Um, I can't tell you, like, I can't, I can't think of anything currently chemistry wise in the water column that would affect these corals uh, besides ammonia. Um, and there shouldn't be any in there because there's no fish at the moment um, and I am using rock that was part of my old uh, reef tank so yeah that's the that's why I think it's safe to add certain corals um, obviously there are corals that I probably wouldn't add like SPS and stuff because they are just a little bit more fragile but the reason why I am adding corals is because of their ability to carry nitrifying bacteria and also older bacteria so the idea is to to get a few and hopefully let it populate a little bit so when I do add the fish in um, and when the fish pee and poo 
um, there is a little bit of nitrifying bacteria already in the tank just to be able to break down that ammonia. So that's the reason behind it. Um, I did it with my last tank with the Red Sea Reefer. I added about four hammers in probably about a few days after I set the tank up. And those hammers did absolutely fine. Um, so hopefully it'll be the same sort of situation over here. You can see I've got a frog spawn, I've got a Cinularia, and then I've also got two hammers. Um, all these corals bar the um, Cinularia have been at the uh, fish shop, at my local fish shop for quite a few months. I think also the frog spawn may be uh, like a freshly um, collected one. So, but the hammers um, have been there for a while. So um, it should be all good. If you're worried about their color, um, it's honestly because of the light that I'm using. It is a freshwater um, tank light. So um, it probably can't penetrate this depth that well. And the colors are a little bit off. So um, the corals do look sort of a bit dull, um, but I, I am gonna address the lighting situation hopefully soon. Um, and I will let you guys know about that. But um, yeah, so these are the few rocks I had left over from my uh, old Red Sea Reefer 350. I do have a few more. That's currently in another tank um, with some of my fish. Um, but yeah, I've sort of started the scape. You can see I've also glued a little bit. Um, I did have some leftover stone fix and I also used uh, the d, &D uh, Aquarium Epoxy, which is really good. I feel it doesn't hold as strong as stone fix, but I, I don't think it'll leach as much as what stone fix um, does. I think initially stone fix may leach a little bit of silicates and stuff and other things, but if you use like small amounts, it shouldn't um, really harm anything. But um, yeah, so this is how it's looking. The tank is like water clarity wise, it's, um, it's honestly pretty clear. <laughs> I can't really see many particles um, or anything. It, it honestly looks as clear as it did when I had my Red Sea Reef uh, 350. So um, obviously there's not like there's no fish or anything yet. So um, we'll have to wait and see once we start stocking it properly um, how clear the water is going to be. But um, yeah, I've got my AI Nero 3 um, still here. I absolutely love this wave maker, guys. I, <laughs> I was going to sell it, but I, I thought I'd, I'd hold on to it. And I'm really happy I did because um, I think they are. Um, not super underrated because I think a lot of people keep them, but I think they're probably one of the best value for money wave makers that you can get. Um, the AI Nero 3 and the 5 even um, with its recent price drop here in Australia. Um, but um, yeah, tank's coming along. So it's been filled for, uh, I'd say maybe five days now, five, six days, um, probably close to a week. Um, I also did add like a little uh, bacteria boost. Um, so if there was any ammonia in the tank for any reason, um, that has a lot of nitrifying bacteria in it. So that should hopefully take care of it. Um, it's called Prodi Bio. I think it's it's the same as using like a Dr. Tim's um, one and only, I guess, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so far everything is rolling along. Um, but uh, it, it is early days. So uh, yeah, we'll sort of wait and see. And um, I'm gonna try to do regular updates. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe and follow my Instagram at uh, Melbourne Reefer for regular updates and stuff like that. Uh, I've got a lot of things planned. It's, um, it's gonna be pretty interesting um, to see how it goes. Cause I, I think I got a few, few decent sort of ideas that, um, that if they come together, it could, you know, it could potentially make the tank um, look really nice and also be really, you know, be really easy to care for. So it could be um, something for, you know, people that sort of, um, you know, they want like corals and stuff, but they don't want to sump. Um, they don't want to have to worry about, you know, um, doing like plumbing and, and, and um, worry about things like that. So make sure, yeah, you guys, uh, stay tuned but um everything is rocking along um, i uh decided to actually take off uh the cover glass um now the cover glass that i um that actually came with the tank was probably a bit too thick and i think it was um actually 
re reflecting probably too much of uh, of the light. Now, if you had a fresh water, if you're running this as a fresh water um, tank, it obviously it probably wouldn't matter. I think the refracted light would still be enough to grow um, most plants, but I think with coral, um, it was probably uh, refracting uh, maybe a bit too much. So I decided to take it off. Um, and we'll see how it goes with evaporation. Um, it's, um, it's obviously not a big deal. I have an RO unit and stuff. Um, I wanted to sort of keep the maintenance a bit lower, which is why I wanted to run a cover glass um, system. But I understand obviously with corals, um, they do require light for photosynthesis and stuff. So um, I'm well aware of that. But um, we'll sort of see how that goes. This, um, this intake pipe is really annoying me because of the color of it. Um, like I said in the old video, uh, in my last video, unfortunately, uh, Eheim doesn't sell, the, oh, our stores don't stock the black um, inlet pump uh, in Australia. So I'm gonna have to order it online from uh, I think the UK. Um, but uh, once that's, once I get a black one and I um, suction cup it to the glass, it'll look, it'll look a lot better. Um, but guys, to be honest, it like I know a lot of like pipes and stuff in the in the main display puts off people. But um, like looking at it personally, I besides that one there, honestly, it's not too bad. Like once everything grow like grows in, um, I swear you'll like pretty much forget about it. But um, yeah, I've got my uh, three hundred watt Eheim heater in there uh, connected to a. Inkbird controller um, set to 25.6 uh, degrees. Seems to be doing all right. It is, uh, we are technically in summer now in Melbourne, Australia, so um, it should be heating the tank, no problem. We'll see how it goes in winter. But um, yeah, so make sure you guys stay tuned. Um, and I will have an update on my other tank, which is holding most of my livestock. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one.